everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got this really gorgeous jewellery box or trinket box or storage box or whatever box you want to call it. It can just be a nice little gift box if you want. Now it has got a lot of stuff in it already which is why the lid was kind of falling off then. But basically I've just finished this. This is all Prima Flowers um, leaves. I've got a doily. I've got papers here by Floral Fusion and basically you lift it up and you've got this nice little ribbon detail there. And then I've got this sentiment, don't let anybody dull your sparkle, which I'll show you in the tutorial. And I've filled this with all of my rings. So you know that I am a huge fan of jewellery, especially rings. The bigger, the bolder, the wackier, the garyishness about them, anything like that. I just love. So I've got a hoodie on today and I've got my bling ring on. It really doesn't matter. Um, you know, I could be in my pyjamas and I've got some, you know, crazy ring on like that one there I absolutely adore that one so I wanted a little kind of trinket box in my craft room with the rings in because at the minute I was they were just kind of dotted around and I was worried I was I did panic because I, I thought I'd lost one of them so basically now what I've got is this lovely little box so I can rotate my jewellery <laughs> It's like a big thing in my life <laughs> but I have a, in my bedroom I've got um, a jewellery box full of more rings and I find that they kind of get forgotten because I just leave the same ones lying around here and um, yeah just wanted to kind of change it up a little bit so this is what I have come up with. Now I do advise that you watch this tutorial first right the way through. Don't go and get all your stuff ready and start crafting me because I make a lot of changes. They're very simple changes and they are alternatives for you. So I give you lots of options and lots of ways to make this box look and work to whatever it is that you want it to work. So yeah, just watch it first and then decide what you want to do. So, but yeah, it's really, really lovely. It is a four, just over a four by four base. Oh no, it is four, yeah, four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And it is one and a half tall, not including the feet. And then you can see that it just drops down. It's got a really nice closure to it, really nice and heavy. And it's just a gorgeous little, you know, keepsake box. So let's get into the tutorial. So first of all, you need a piece of eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter cardstock. And you're gonna score at half an inch and two inches on all four sides. So rotate half and two. half and two and then again half and two. Okay next you just want to burnish all of your score lines. Okay and then we're going to turn this now into our reinforced base, our little box. So just flip it over and you basically, it doesn't really matter which side you choose but you're going to cut down past, so you've got the because it's, it's an odd style this one because obviously we've just got the half inch reinforced sides but basically you'll have this larger square here in the corner and then you'll have a rectangle, a rectangle and a tiny square there. Okay so you want to cut all the way down past that first score line here down to this second score line and then go along this one here and cut all the way down like so then rotate it and just remove that piece completely and then remove this other rectangle like so. So you'll now just be left with the square in that corner. And then what you can do is just take a little wedge off. So it's exactly the same way that you would do any other reinforced box, it's just you're not working with two even sides, i.e. you don't have this one and a half and then one and a half again it's one and a half and half so but it is exactly the same process so you can see now what we've got and then you go along to and take a little wedge off that one there as well there we go then go along to this side and do the same so you'll cut all the way down this one cut all the way down that one again just down to that second score line then rotate remove that completely and remove that strip there and then again, just take little wedges off of all of your sides there. Okay, so that's what you should have. And then flip the whole thing around so now it's facing away from you, what you've just done, and repeat exactly the same again. Okay, so that is now what you should have. So now we just need to start sticking all of our sides in. So I'm just going to grab 
which glue had more in it, that one there. And basically what you want to do first of all, so again just the same way as you're going to, this is still flipped over, so this is the inside, okay, so you're working on the outside. These four square tabs, that's where you want to put your glue. So I always like to do one at a time, but just apply, you don't have to go crazy, but just enough glue and then bring in that tab and bring up the sides there. And make sure, that, as I always say, you get a really nice corner to your box there. Okay, and then just bring in your bone folder and just spread out any glue there just so you get a really nice seal. Okay, and then go around to the next one. Again, pop a little bit. I always like to focus on the score line edge so and the inside piece here more than anything else because you want to make sure that you get that really tight join you don't want it open at all. Okay, you can see again there. Okay, so then just repeat that again on this side here. Okay, so that is what you will have and you'll be left with this half inch piece and then you're just going to fold that in just like you would normally but obviously, you know, it would in normal reinforced boxes, it would be half, um, one and a half inches, the same width as the side there, but it's not because I just wanted to use that um, A4 size cardstock. So, but just even by adding this half inch reinforcement will make a huge difference. Um, so, it, you know, you don't, it's just other ways to show you, you can still create strong boxes even if you've got smaller card stocks how to get different sizes um, you know but still make them strong so yeah I loved this green and it matches perfectly so you just have to find ways to make it work so just going around there you can see I'm just putting a thin a thin amount of glue and then just let the bone folder really do the rest of the work because that will spread the glue out and give you a really nice crease and side there and once that dries, that will, like I said, reinforce it nicely. I'm going to line the inside so you won't see those fingerprints. <laughs> and um, get those other two stuck down. Okay, so next we need to make our lid, so the flap that's going to come down. And you need a piece of six and a quarter by four and three quarters. Now I've got a couple of random score lines here. This was paper that was scrap, but a little tip, if you do ever you know, have bits and you might have scored it wrong, don't throw them away. All you need to do is flip your cardstock over. So I've scored it, um, so whatever side you've got the lump on, okay, you want that facing up, and then just burnish and flatten it. Now you will still see it, there will be a shine there, but you, you shouldn't be able to feel it. It will pretty much flatten that cardstock again. So you can certainly use it if you're covering it with any mats and layers, which I intend to do with this piece. So, you know, don't, don't throw those bits away sometimes if you think, oh, I've just scored a whole piece of 12 by 12 wrong or something. I mean, generally I would salvage, salvage you know, elements of it anyway, but you can still use that as another 12 by 12 piece again. Just flip it over and burnish over those score lines. Okay, so what you want to do here, so you need that piece of green card that I've showed in lots of tutorials. This is just a piece of cardstock folded in half, doesn't matter what size, um, but it's to do that little kind of 1 16th of an inch. And um, you're going to pop your cardstock in, in the corner there, and then with your piece that you're scoring along the long side, you want to score at one and five eighths of an inch. Okay. So by just adding that card in, if you've not seen this or you're new to my channel, it basically now is going to allow us when we um, burnish this, we're going to pop this on one of the sides, it doesn't matter because it's an equal sided box, but it means now that it will, see how it just curves around and you get a really tight closure. If we didn't pull it out just that tiny, tiny piece, then you wouldn't get that real nice finish. So that's what you want. Now you want it to overhang by about a quarter of an inch on all four sides. So if I turn it upside down there, the back's gonna be stuck down, but can you see this overhang on the left, the right, and along the top here? That's what you want, because once we build up all of our design and everything, it's gonna create a weight, which will just make that drop down and it will fall perfectly on top there, okay? So let's just get rid of this. So then what we want to do is stick that down. So what you want to do is decide 
what side of your box you want it to go on. I'm going to put it on the side where I've got my joins. So if you see in there, you see I've got the joins there. So that's going to be the back and then the other join is going to be at the front. Just so that when you look in, you're going to see this. But I mean, I intend to cover it anyway, so it probably doesn't actually make any difference right now. But in case you're not going to cover it, do it that way because then you've, you don't see as much. And I'm just going to pop my glue. Again, focusing on the outer edges. Like so, turn that over and just make sure you get it nice and even on both sides. Let me get it right up to your score line. If you have got, concentrate on getting it up to the score line. Don't worry if you've got a little bit that maybe might be poking out the edge here because you can trim that off. But that's the, the main bit is keep it close to that score line and just keep lifting it up like so. If you don't, if you're still not confident doing that scoring, don't score it at all. Lie it on here, stick it down like I'm doing and focus on this end and then just bring it up yourself, pull it up and just make that fold yourself with your finger and your thumb. Okay, so there are ways to do it. Um, just by doing it that way you may not get a real clean you know kind of um, burnished score line but it will still work so if you're not scoring concentrate on keeping it onto this edge if you have scored it make sure you focus on keeping the box up to the score line because even I can see I can feel that I've got a tiny little just ever so slightly a little amount there so I'm just going to grab my scissors here and just again you're not going to see any of that there we go just taking a tiny bit off so I probably didn't need to pull the card out as much as I did but I just want to show you different ways that you can do it but now you can see how nice that looks okay so I've just got my little 6x6 floral fusion pack which I've made I've used this paper when I've made a lot of my kind of trinket boxes and stuff like that because I just think it's really pretty so I've just pulled out this one here which is like the bamboo kind of effect and I've also cut a piece of cream cardstock and I've cut this doily as well so basically I'm going to have the three of them on top of each other I might add some flowers as well and then that's all going to sit on top like so because I want to start creating some weight now on the top of the lid so for the cream piece you need a piece of now it's not an exact square because obviously this bit flaps over the box below so it's a piece of four and five eighths of an inch by four and a half so just slightly off and then the piece to layer on top is four and three eighths of an inch by four and a quarter okay so oh let me just get it there so that will just go over the top just make sure you get it in the right orientation so your two sides are equal Okay, you can see that I've got a nice border. And then so you just want to stick them down and stick that all down. And obviously, if you're going to decorate or put a doily on, you might have pre-brought doilies because they will fit nicely on there as well. So I'm going to get all that stuck down. Okay, so that's now all stuck down. And already, it's it's wanting to just drop down, put, you know, which is what we want. So now I want to do some more inside decoration. So I've got this piece here, which is from the same kit, um, sorry, the same pack. And this is the, you get fabric um, papers at the very beginning, two fabric designs. So there's that one, which is really lovely. And then this one here. And um, yeah, although this is quite an old pack, it's still available, so I can find links for you. So it will all be in my blog. But this piece is going to go inside. And then I really like the clash of that against it which is the same obviously pattern there. So this piece to go inside, if you want to do this, is four and one eighth of an inch squared, because it's going in there, so that is an equal side, because it fits in perfectly. And then these pieces here are all gonna go on the insides, like so. So I want this to be quite luxurious. It is gonna be, obviously, a little jewelry box. So these are one and three eighths of an inch by four and one eighth of an inch. And you'll have four of those and they will all go in like so. It makes it look all cosy in there. I love it. And that one. So that's what you want to do. You want to stick them all inside there. And then I am going to find a 
just a happy inspirational quote and I'm going to have that in the lid here. So these two are the, exactly the same sizes as these two here but I've just reversed it so instead of my larger one being this cream colour my larger one is patterned and the smaller one is cream and that's what I'm going to stamp on. But that's basically going to sit inside like so. Make sure I get the right orientation, you get a nice, it's just a tiny like little one eighth of an inch border on those ones and then that is going to go over the top like so and I'm going to find some nice inks and get something stamped on there just so that every time I open it up I will have something nice to read and again the weight now you've got one, two, three, four, five the doily six and what I'm going to decorate it with already we've got a really strong really nice heavy lid there okay so go ahead get that all stuck down and decorated how you want okay so I have changed the inside so I've shrunk down this cream square and then I've just die cut these two here just using some fancy nest squares that I've got dies and then the sentiment is lovely I love this it's the let me grab it it's the woodware clear magic uh, the singles and this is called One for the Girls and it's got a bit of everything, don't let anybody dull your sparkle which is what I've used birthday girls just want to have fun, stunning, fabulous and perfect this was the other one I was thinking, you always sparkle but today you're going to rock you put the sass into sassy and I remembered your birthday without social media really fun and they're inexpensive, I'll share all the links but they are good stamps these and they're photopolymer, they stamp beautifully so yeah I wanted this one here because I thought you know like I said before I've got my hoodie on I've got my, my bling on my hand so yeah nobody's going to dull my sparkle <laughs> and um, yeah I just like to look at that every time I open it now I'm changing my mind again so this is why I always say watch my tutorial because I'm only making one I, you know I'm I am literally just push and record every time I kind of decide what I want to do so I've got these feet which I've had for a while now these are for using on a a wooden box so if you're altering um, a wooden box then you will use these where's my other foot I did have four and I'll put it down somewhere anyway I'll find it in a minute so you get all these nails that's what the nails are for to actually screw it in but if you're just using hot glue and it will work fine on here but basically you find the deeper side I'm going to stick these feet on the corner they don't look much at the minute but once they're on they're going to look really nice so if you don't want to do this then decorate the sides here with the same size paper that's in the sides here and you can do that on the sides there if you want or you could put corner protectors on which I've used in the past but I want to use these feet now to do that I need to take off these flaps on the back okay so only do this if this is what you want to do but this is how I work if I was making two of these I would have had this ready and then I would have you know you wouldn't see all this part but a lot of people say like when I make my tutorials that like, how do I decide what I'm going to do it's just like this really trial and error you make something and then you think actually I want to change it or I'm going to add that in that's what I do so I'm just very carefully using my snips because these are very sharp so I can get right up to the corners and get a really nice cut like so so you can see what I've done there still looks really nice but yeah only do this if you're confident doing it I, I you know don't go uh, you know ruining your projects but that's why I always say like I said just before watch the tutorial first because you could do this before you stick it down. So again, just take that tiny piece off. There we go. And just smooth off the edge there. Perfect. There we go. So now it still opens. It still looks good. In fact, I like the way it kind of has that little bit hanging there. It really frames that square. And now I can put my feet on all of my corners like so. I mean I could decorate it with paper as well but I just, the feet are quite fancy and by the time I finish the top as well. So I'm going to get my hot glue on and get those stuck down. Okay, so I've stuck the three on so I just wanted to check it's all going to be nice and it is. So I'm just getting, make sure you get the right end up. I'm just following the design really. I'm just putting a little bit in there, like so. And then just, I kind of slide the bottom into the corner. Someone's car alarm. Apologies. Isn't that stunning? I adore it. I just think that is so sweet. And it now has a weight on the base as well, so it will start to balance out the top of this. Now, this is another thing I've changed. So again, I'm going to put a little thing at the beginning of this tutorial to say, watch first. <laughs> 
but basically I want to add a piece of ribbon because I'm going to be putting some stuff on here in a minute and already it's wanting to fall back which is fine because I know it's going to fall I want that weight but when I'm opening up my jewellery and looking I want to be able to obviously see that sentiment I don't really want it just flopping over so I've got some very thin organza just this pretty ribbon here I've got these tweezer things and I've just very carefully just prized open a little slot just between can you see there and basically I want to feed that ribbon in there with some of my glue and then I'm going to attach it and I need to do the same is feed another little open a little gap there which I pretty much can do anyway so even if you've used double sided or wet glue you should be able to do this but if you just carefully just go in it's just ways I'm just again kind of showing you really this is this is what I do before I obviously edit and show you guys so I'm going to very carefully pop some glue in there this is only holding the lid up so it doesn't don't worry it doesn't have to be like super super strong in fact I think what I'll do is I'll add the glue onto the actual ribbon itself it's and it is kind of more decorative although it does have a purpose it's it's more decorative than anything I'm just opening up that and just carefully slide that in and then I can push it in further okay so I'm just kind of lining it up there and then just squeeze that back down you wouldn't even know that I added that you know after we'd stuck everything down but you can see now where it's just sticking out I'm just going to let that dry because basically that is going to hold in fact I think I need to have it on a slope there we go yeah have it on a slight angle Last time i done this I used a real chain, I'll share that one, so that was a nice little trinket box, I'll share that up here. Have it on a slope, see how I've got it kind of coming at an angle down here, because basically it is going to go like that. See now how the lid holds up, if I just hold on its side that's how it's going to be. So I need to just line it up with where I want it to open on the bottom here, but I need to feed it in a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm just opening up the bottom there, you can see, just prized it apart, so I'm just going to splodge a little bit of glue in there, and then just kind of cut the ribbon where I think I'm going to need it to be, and then I'm just going to slide that all inside. So I've got it with my tweezers, I'm trying to just pushing it down until I'm happy with its positioning really. Okay, so you can see there what I've done. So see, it's nice. So what I would say is before you stick this down and before you stick this here, pop your ribbon in, just so you've got it at an angle like that. So tie-lip G, you might want to have it further here or higher up. Higher up. It's, it doesn't matter. But now that needs to be worked so it falls inwards. But you can see now that's what I will have. And then when I open it up, it doesn't fall back. So now I'm just going to finish and decorate the top.
Okay, yeah. and there is the top, which I love. And I've just filled that with Prima flowers, with leaves from Ikea, and yeah, the doily underneath there. I just think it looks gorgeous. So now when it opens up, see that stands there. And then I've just gone and grabbed some of my rings. So these are like my, I kind of rotate them. I've got a big, big tub in the, in the bedroom. Well, not tub, it's a, a nice box, but I'll put them in there and then I can use them and keep that in my craft room so I can just choose which ones I want. I've just been pushing the ribbon, just kind of starting to fold it inwards so that now you can see it folds. Probably that one there needs to go up, side down. So yeah, there you go. Just bring it up again just so you can see all the detail there, the feet, everything just looks gorgeous. So it's going to look so nice on my shelf and easier now for me to just choose which rings because like I said, they're all dotted around otherwise. So there, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.